thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, well, this is a, a rapid project started um, in June and I am the, the, the PI and the co-PIs are Dr. Krista Hestekin and Dr. Peter Crooks. Um, so what, what I wanted to, to tell you all about first a little bit about is, is, is long-term disinfectants. So um, this project is to make long-term disinfectants for disaffecting hard surfaces, soft surfaces, lots of different surfaces. Um, we were working on an NSF project where we had, um, we're making tempo um, modified cellulose, so tempo oxidized cellulose and we found that by attaching certain groups, we could get it to, to be a disinfectant. There is currently only one long-term disinfectant that has been approved for emergency use by the US EPA. Um, there's the website um, dealing with that. Normally it takes about 18 months to get a disinfectant um, approved. Um, this one was obviously approved faster because of COVID. Um, there is a need for long-term disinfectants for both bacteria and viruses for now and when COVID beyond. Um, we're working with the University of Arkansas Medical School on these long-term disinfectants. And what we're really looking at is all of what goes into this. What's the best chemistry? What's the best application procedures? And what sort of potential lifetimes can you expect from these surfaces? Um, and this started as part of this NSF app score, as I said, so. And if my slide will advance, then we can, okay. So we, started looking, we are making a lot of these different chemistries. I'm going to tell you, show you one specific result today, but the easiest way to make the chemistry is ionically bonded materials. Um, there is long lists of approved disinfectants for different viruses and, and, and bacteria, and you can take those dis disinfectants and ionically bond them to, to the surface, your own surface, and so then and coat that surface on onto whatever hard surface you want. So that's the easiest form. That's the form over here on, on, on the left. Um, the, one of the, the more difficult forms is we have a something that will make a paracid. And so what this will do is it will make hydrogen peroxide over the course of time. Um, and so, so by, by doing that for, for long term, you can, you can put an oxidizing agent in which will destroy things. Um, so that's a material we're testing as well. And then the third one is to try to take these chemistries and covalently attach them to the tempo modified surface. We've uh, developed the ability to put click chemistry on the surface of these tempo groups. And so because of that, we can, um, we, we can really attach just about anything we want. And we're looking at some of the approved disinfectants for doing that. Um, what this shows you is some of our initial results. So this is with the easiest form, the ionically bound disinfectant. We used a common disinfectant DDAC and attached it to form one, which is one form of our tempo modified cellulose. Um, the form one says that every other carboxyl or every other hydroxide free group has been converted to a carboxyl and form two is one where um, they're all converted, and so it becomes water soluble in, in, in things. And what we what we did here is we used E. coli as, as a first test. This is how fast E. coli grows when you look at it on a 96 well plate. And these are the different things that and and how they're growing out. And so if you look at this, our form one doesn't do much at all to stop the the, the growth. Um, the DDAC and, and, and the, the form one with the DDAC both stopped the, the, the growth when, when you did that. You move on to 48 hours, you can see that our, our surface is, is doing pretty well. After a week, after two weeks, we're still seeing um, close to complete, uh, basically a, a com complete ability to destroy E. coli when we, when we put it into the surface. And, this has a lot of error bars because these are all 96 wells a piece that are doing this. And the reason I put it on here, it gets kind of messy when you, when you do all that stuff. But over a two week time period um, so far, we, we can see that these ionically bond surfaces pr work pretty well. As far as how they work on the surface, I'm gonna start a video here. Um, as you can see, and I, I guess the, uh, on, uh, on this video, that we have a surface that we've coated this on with a, a, a spray sort of surface. Um, 
It is, it is a green scray surface because we put the colorant in. Um, we can scrape it, but if you just rub hard on it, it does not come off. If you spray it with water and a little bit of surfactant, on the other hand, you can get it to come off very easily. And um, a, a, a eventually here in about five seconds, it's gonna show that you can remove it all and your door handle looks the, the, the same way that, that you had before. Um, right now we were adding, uh, the green color has nothing to do with science. It's a marketing thing that people are, interested that how would you know that something had had this spray done, but you can see it can go on and off pretty quickly. Um, and so right now we are also tests, which I'm not going to show today, of rubbing hard on this surface to see, you know, how much you can, can get off of the, the surface and such. And then just the last really quick slide, because I know my time is coming up, is we started with bacteria because bacteria is easier to test, not necessarily easier to, to, to kill, but viruses are are a little bit difficult. Um, we, we are in the process of, of doing that right now to show it will do that as well. We are developing the covalently bond groups. Um, and there's a lot of interest in, in, in this sort of thing. And we're interested in collaborating with any one of you as well. Thanks.